Let what people think or say about you define you. You are more than that. You are more than what your critics have surmised. You are more than what your haters have said. You are more than the things that have happened to you. You are not inferior to anybody or anything. Don't accept anybody's negative estimation or evaluation of who you are or what your life's possibilities can be. Don't trust your miracle mind to the deceptions of political opinion and public polls and social media. Do not accept put downs from those who do not know you and do not love you. You are not helpless. You are not hopeless. You are not dumb, dangerous, deviant, or dysfunctional. You are not finished and you are not second class. If anybody asks you who you are, just tell them you're a child of God. David took off Saul's armor said, I can't fight in this because if David had tried to fight in, the, in Saul's armor, it would have been a disaster. And can I tell you why? Because borrowed armor always is. Preach, lads. Amen. See, David had to fight like we have to live in what is authentic to us. I wish I had time to work right there. You got to refuse to fight in their armor, but fourthly, refuse to fight with about God's power. Smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you won't need God before it's over. See, a man and David, fresh from the sheep pen, standing in front of the giant. He was anxious, but he was also anointed. Goliath looked at him and he laughed out loud. And then he bellowed, is this the best you got? He looked at David and said, I'm going to cut you into a thousand pieces. But notice, David did not retreat. He may have been scared, but he did not run away. David responded, you come against me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God whom you have defied. Today I will defeat you and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel and everyone assembled here will know that this battle belongs to the Lord. This emerging adult had the audacity to step towards, stare at, and say to this giant, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm telling you in advance, because when this is over, you ain't going to be around. Now, why was he able to do that with such confidence? It's in the last part of his statement. He said this battle belongs to the Lord. It is for the Lord's glory. I need to talk to your neighbor because some of you have been trying to fight your own battles in your own strength. My God is right there to fight your battle for you. It's time for you to trust God. It's time for you to try God. It's time for you to talk to God. It's time for you to surrender to God. You've tried to fix it in your own strength. It's time for you to let God take over. Bump your neighbor like they owe you $20 and been avoiding you. And say, give it to God. Amen. Give it to God. And then speak to your giant. Tell your giant, in the name of God, victory is mine. Tell your giant, my future begins now. Tell your giant, this is the last time we're going to talk about this. Tell your giant, I will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Tell your giant, no weapon formed against me can prosper. Tell your giant, I shall have what I decree, I declare. It belongs to me. I'm going to speak it into the atmosphere. David went in God's power, and that's how we've got to go. Don't go in your own strength. But fifthly and finally, you got to refuse to settle for the same giant. Amen. My time is gone, but I've got to give you this last thing. It's in verse 40. David knelt at the river, and in that moment, he framed something. It's essential for you and I. Will you live imaginatively from your knees or conventionally on your feet? Y'all miss that. He knelt at the river, and he picked five smooth stones out of the river. Now, we know the story. You ask the question, why did he pick five? Did he have some doubt? No. He picked five stones. Don't forget this. Because if you read the chapter 22, Goliath had four brothers. 
y'all slow, amen. David said, I got a rock for every one of y'all. Bring it on out of here. See, and this is crucial because David understood that if you defeat a giant, giants keep on coming. But the odds are in your favor. I'm sorry to tell you, there will always be giants in your life. You always have giant problems, giant issues, giant hurts, giant emergencies, giant circumstances that you cannot face on your own. But you can face them with God because the odds are in your favor. There will always be giants, but the good news is is they don't have to be the same giant. Do what David did. David took his sling and he threw his rock and God guided that rock to the one place on Goliath that did not have armor and it knocked him out cold. He crumpled to the ground and notice in the text David didn't slap high fives with anybody. David didn't chest bump anybody. David didn't try to upload the moment on video to YouTube. David didn't pause to take pictures for the gram, but he ran over and he finished the job. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, the Bible says they turned and ran. My last word to you today is you got to finish the job because somebody here is still living with the same giant you've had for 10 years. You're living with the same problems, the same issues, the same difficulties, the same poor attitude, the same sense of failure, the same low self-esteem, the same doubts, the same anxieties, the same fears because you never finished the job. You took your giant down, but you didn't take your giant out. Today is the day for you to finish the job because the odds are in your favor. That's what Jesus did. He had a hard way to go. He had a terrible death to die. They plotted to kill him. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied it. He was arrested in Gethsemane. He stood before the Sanhedrin Council. He was condemned by Pilate, scorned by Annas and Caiaphas. The good folk taunted him. The soldiers mocked him. They whipped him all night long. And they hung him high, stretched him wide. He bowed his head. today. The reason I'm loud today is that's not how this story is. Three days later, I said three days later, he rose again and he finished it once and for all. I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that he finished the thing. He finished it so that trouble wouldn't last on me.
shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, shake my hand well, because all the odds are in my favor. Look them in the eye if you believe it and say, I'm in a win.